Hey everybody, Tesh K Mandy here. Time for a little Q and A. Um, I've been waiting a long time for people to send me questions, and uh, as of right now, uh, only four users have. So let's start off with Central Illinois Dash Cam. Number one, why did you name your truck Maximilian? Well, all my cars, almost every one of my cars has had a name that has been loosely based around the make or model number. Um, that's just how I've been able to name cars. Um, like my first car was a white uh, 1983 Oldsmobile Omega. That was Meg. Shut up, Meg. Okay, my second car was a green 94 Geo Tracker 4x4 convertible. And that one was officially named Lil Gween Twacker, or just Twacker for short. A 95 Ford Escort that was purple. It was a Ford Escort LX with a 1.9. And I had originally named her Ms. Bootylicious Grape. She did not like that name, um, so then I changed her name to Sport Scort. And after I started calling her Sport Scort, she started running a hell of a lot better. And the uh, previously non-functioning AC magically started working again. So I figured, well, if she's not happy with the name, she'll let me know. And she sure did. Brown 90, or 85 S10 Blazer, which coincidentally was the vehicle I learned to drive on. Yeah, it was Blaze. His name was Blaze. Red and gray, 91 S10 Blazer two-door. That was Tyga. Um, and then after that, I had a 91 S10 Blazer that was blue and white. And when I dragged it, towed it home with... When Tyga towed it from where I bought it, um, I was riding in the driver's seat steering it. And um, there was a lot of, a lot of suspension squeak. So uh, because of the blue and white and the squeaky, he donned the name Squeaky Smurf. My 94 Chevy Cavalier two-door um, was called the Cavaqueer. My 99 Intrigue, she was just called Trigue. 88 Cutlass Sierra was Sierra. 87 Buick is Sierra. Uh, Buick LeSabre is Sabrina. My good buddy Maximilian here that's currently sitting here powering the cam. Um, Maximilian, because, well, that uh, actually plays into the next question here. Number two, what make, model, year is Max? Maximilian is a 1995 Mitsubishi Mighty Max. That's a uh, standard cab short wheelbase, standard bed, two wheel drive, and uh, that's how we got the name Maximilian. Uh, number three, what was your inspiration to get you started in dash camming? Well, you know, there's a couple different reasons. Um, as I explained in my channel preview back before I even got a camera, back when I was waiting for the camera to show up, I explained it, but I'll go through it here because, uh, it's probably the most uh, convenient way, rather than have you go through the video. Um, it started off with uh, two very serious accidents that I was in, in within five months of each other. Uh, I was hit by a drunk driver who was running from the cops in Norwich, right by Bacchus Hospital. And if you've watched any of iCamD's videos, she's passed through that intersection a couple of times. Um... I literally remember my light turning green. There were three cars parked side by side at the red light on my left. No traffic to the right. And there were, as I started to get into the intersection, there was a little divot in the road where the two roads met. So I wasn't going fast because otherwise, you know, I would have bottomed out my suspension. So I came into it very gently and my engine, my transmission barely shifted into second from coasting. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up almost three hours later in the hospital. Supposedly, the police cruiser that was there at the scene that had followed him to the accident site after he ran from the cops after getting pulled over for speeding while driving drunk 
with a suspended license. Um, I don't remember the collision happening. There was no dash cam footage from the police. And that was the point where I said, you know, there's, there's this big missing gap in my memory that I will probably never get back. And it would be nice if I knew what had happened. I would have, you know, possibly played the video back and seen if there was any way I could have avoided it. I mean, I looked both ways twice before I pulled into the intersection. It was after that that I started watching, like, Russian dash cam videos, and I was seeing all the Russian accidents and thinking, oh my god, about 85% of these, if it had just been proper driving technique, they could have been avoided. You know, s stupid things like people from the extreme right lane making a left turn across traffic, or people passing when it wasn't safe, and then running off the road and rolling their car because there was no not enough room for them to pass and things like that. I became kind of really into those videos and I would sit there by myself watching them and think, oh, well, you know, look at all these, there's a million ways all these accidents could have been avoided if people had just known how to drive or how to even avoid the accident. Um, so after that, I started looking into, I wonder if anybody in the U.S. has some. So then I was finding some across the U.S. and I was watching some of their videos and then I was like, I wonder if anybody in Connecticut has some. And then I came across Bad Drivers of Connecticut. Hi, Wendy. Um, and a few others and that just started me off. And then I realized, you know, this is something I could do. And it inspired me because I, you know, after that nasty accident, five years ago where my car got totaled out and I woke up in the hospital um my thought was I need to have something to cover my ass I would be coming home driving my mother's car or shortly after I had the Buick um, I started panicking because I would have anxiety attacks driving home from work or driving home from Norwich I would drive from Norwich to my house which would take about 20 minutes and one day I came home and my mother was like why are you stressed out why are you freaking out and I said well you don't realize I said you you keep telling me that I'm overreacting and that I'm crazy but I said I counted today 27 vehicles crossed over the double yellow line on my way home into my lane coming towards me as if a you know there was enough head-on collision near misses that, you know, I said, well, I got to get a camera. And then, well, it's been a little over a year, and here we are. Okay, number four, what editing software do you use? Well, my first videos, some of my earlier ones, were done with Windows Live Movie Maker because it's free and did a fairly good job. Um... It just had a lot of bugs, you know, if you were doing longer videos, the thing could crash on you, just not very reliable. So I ended up uh, investing some money in buying uh, Sony Vegas Pro version 13, and I've been very happy with it. There's a bit of a learning curve, but um, going from one software to another and from going from the Windows Live Movie Maker is what's called the storyboard type editing and Sony Vegas is what's called a timeline based editing. It's a slightly different setup, but the timeline based editing was more, I could wrap my brain around it more having spent uh, two years of high school in video productions class where I, I edited VHS, uh, Super VHS, and uh, high eight and eight millimeter video camcorders. So I had, you know, I had more of a timeline-based knowledge walking into it. Um, the really cool thing is what used to take about six or seven different boards connected together with two VCRs, a minimum of two TVs, a mixer board, audio mixer, equalizer, CD player, you know, all sorts of stuff. Now it all fits in one nice little package in one program. So that's why I ended up going that way. Um, number five, what dash cam do you use? Okay, well, it is listed in my credits, but I don't expect you guys to hang tight for all those. I realize that you have a lot more 
things to do with your time than watch my videos. So, um, currently the uh, camera I use in the truck is the Mini 806. Um, it's kind of flaky, but I've been able to get around, work around most of the issues I have with it. <clears throat> what I used to use for my, which was my original cam in my earlier videos, and then became my rear cam for a while until we got the town and country. Now it's in the town and country. I have the uh, Genie, that's G I I N I I, GD 250. That doesn't have the GPS or anything, but that's a nice $80 camera I got from Walmart.com, and it's wonderful. I've never had a problem with it. Okay, number six, when did you start dash camming? Well, that would have been, uh, I believe, now I'm doing this from memory. I want to say like July uh, 7th or 11th or something of 2015. So that means I've been doing this a little over a year. Number seven, do you consider your videos to be A, educational so others will learn from mistakes made in the video, B, for entertainment purposes, C, a hobby, D, all of the above, or E, other, please specify. Well, I think, if anything, I would have to say D, all of the above. Um, I don't come across as super educational, like, preaching most of the time. I don't necessarily say, well, general statute such and such states that you have to do this when you're doing that. You know, I don't come across as that. But I do point out the errors in the hopes that people will say, oh, man, that guy didn't signal and he cut Andy off, you know, maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe that's dangerous. When you see it from somebody, when you're doing something that you think is normal driving for you, you don't realize how your actions affect others until you see the same action done to yourself, or in my case, done to me in the videos. So I'm hoping that that educates people to stop and think, maybe I shouldn't do that particular item. Um, uh, my videos are definitely... Uh, B for entertainment purposes. They're definitely entertaining. Um, I try to inject a little bit of my warped sense of humor into it. Um, I've branched out from just standard dash cam videos into doing the the uh, singing on cam type stuff because hey, who doesn't sing while they're driving at some point, or at least hum along or tap your foot or something. So that I do do a little bit of entertainment stuff as well. Um, I think it's kind of important for me to kind of branch out and do other things so that I'm not getting bored with it and you're not getting bored with it. And as far as the hobby goes, well, obviously it's a hobby because I don't get any money from this whatsoever. They're definitely a hobby because, uh, I don't make any money off of it. I don't do anything other than the vi with the videos other than just putting them up there for you. And frankly, um, I enjoy it. I like putting together the video. I like sitting back with all the clips compiled. And here's a little secret about the way I work. Every time I render a video, I take the final, the final product. Before I upload it to YouTube, I sit and watch it start to finish. And I actually sit there and I critique myself throughout the video or at the very end I'll sit there and most of the time I sit back and go, you know what, I can throw together a pretty nice video. You know, as far as I'm looking at the editing aspects and stuff and it's helped me, I don't know if I'll ever use this knowledge in life other than for this channel and things that I do, but. All right, and now for some unconventional questions. <laughs> Number one. If you choked a Smurf, what color would it turn? Well, you know, you did ask this question here first before you asked it of Dallas Dash Camera, but um, I'm thinking since, you know, the, the general cartoony rendition is that, you know, humans that are kind of tan turn blue when they're being deprived of oxygen. I would wonder, if, possibly would a Smurf turn beige? Or tan, or flesh colored, or peach. Well, so I wonder if it would either turn transparent, translucent, or would turn white. I'm thinking. 
Number two, have you ever had to pee so badly that when you finally released your stream, you realized that your toes were curled up into tight little fists? Um, actually, yes, I have been in that situation. Um, when you really gotta go, and sometimes your body just reflexively does things that really don't make any sense. So yeah, I've, I've been there. Um, let's see, bonus question, where did you get the awesome footage for this video? Um, well, I honestly don't remember what video I copied that, uh, that you answered that in. So, I would have to guess, um, if it was driving footage, then obviously it was, you know, out and around southeastern Connecticut. But, um, if it was something else, I really don't know. I'm sorry, Central Illinois, I can't, I, I don't remember what video that was. Yeah, intermission. Okay, bad drivers find me. Uh, let's see, Q and A. Favorite band slash musical group or artist, and why? Well, um, that is a really, really, really tough one because I've listened to so much different type of music, so many different bands and artists that I really can't put my finger on one that is specifically a favorite. I was born in 77, so I have a great repertoire. I've seen a lot of musical acts come and go. I've seen a lot of musical fads come and go. I mean, hey, I was there when... Oop, text message. Um, I was there during the days of uh, Millie Vanilli. I was doing, I was around during the New Kids on the Block phase, um, but I also grew up listening to a lot of the stuff my parents listened to, Carly Simon, Cat Stevens, um, Jim Croce, uh, let's see, Ronnie Millsap, the Gatlin Brothers, John Denver, um, then progressing to like Michael Bolton, Kenny G, uh, I mean, there's just so much music that I enjoy, so I can't narrow it down really at all. Let's see, uh, favorite vehicle ever driven, not necessarily owned. Well, that's a lot of, lot of cars. I've driven a lot of different cars, and uh, I used to work for a buy here, pay here shithole of a dealer, and uh, one of the cars that came in for a detailing was the boss's attorney's car. It was a Mercedes uh, E-Class. I think it was an E420 or an E430. Gorgeous fucking tank of a car. Black with tan interior and I detailed that car and it was just like I almost had an erection the whole time I was detailing the car because the car is that freaking sexy. And that car I only got to drive at 10 miles an hour across the parking lot. But it was comfortable, it was smooth, you could barely tell the car was running. So it was a, it was definitely a nice car. Um, I, w I don't know if it's my favorite, but it definitely ranks up there. One of my dream cars that I've never driven, although I've gotten about as close as you can for production cars, uh, 87 Buick Grand National GNX, which sh shares the same chassis as the Pontiac Grand Prix and the Buick Regal of the same generation. Um, I've driven the Regals, I've driven the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supremes, which are the same chassis. I've driven the Monte Carlos, you know, they all have the same chassis. And they're not, and they're definitely nice, they're big tanks, you know, and tanks are what I like, big heavy cars. But probably the favorite vehicle I've ever owned is split 50-50 between my 94 Geo Tracker and my 94 Cavalier. 
My Cavalier was the most reliable and most dependable car. It only left me stranded once. My Tracker never broke down on me ever and was just amazing to drive. You could you could put it on dry pavement, wet pavement, snow, ice, sand, mud. It was a lot of fun to drive and could fit into just about any parking space in creation. Favorite scenic place to visit? Well, my favorite scenic place to visit um, is actually kind of local to me. It's a little state park called Devil's Hop Yard. Um, it's a very nice, heavily wooded area. It's very, um, it's set in a valley and it's very heavily wooded. So even in the dead of summer, it stays somewhat cool down there. And it's just so nice because there's, you know, you don't see houses or anything around. It's just quiet up there. There's just nothing but you, the trees, and and the water, and nature. And it's really nice. Um, there's another scenic place I like to go. Uh, it's in Colchester-ish. I don't know if it's Colchester, Westchester, somewhere around there. It's called Salmon River State Park. It's off of Route 16. And the other end of it connects to uh, Route 149 in Westchester. That's really nice up there too because it's very similar to Devil's Hop Yard. It's a lot of trees, a good river going through it, and it's just pretty much untouched by human hands. And that's that's what I like for scenery. And let's see, where do you most want to travel slash visit that you haven't been to yet? Well. I have to say, even though I have technically been there, um, it's own. I haven't actually set foot in that area. It was in Denver, Colorado. Um, a friend of mine's mother, my former manager, two jobs ago. Um, she makes an annual trip to Las Vegas, and she saved up her money, and she said, Andy, do you want to go to Vegas with me? And I said, I'd love to go to Vegas. I've never been to Vegas. Um, so we were in a layover in Denver, and I just remember it being in the terminal, staring out the windows, and looking at the freaking mountains, at the Rocky Mountains. And all I could hear playing in my head was John Denver's Rocky Mountain High, which I have on 8-track, by the way. And <clears throat> I swore if I ever got the chance to go to Colorado, I would want to go to Denver. I would want to go through the Rocky Mountains or at least see them by air because it's a beautiful area. Okay, on to the next set of questions. Here's our good friend car cam clips. Woo! Okay, number one, what's the most memorable experience you've ever had? Hmm. Huh. I know. And that would be the time when I worked for Mohegan Sun Casino in Uncasville, Connecticut. And, and this is memorable for a bad reason. It was Halloween, and Halloween has never been my holiday. I always hated dressing up. But one year I decided, you know what, I'm going to try it because everyone else is doing it at work and so on and so forth. So I kind of dressed myself up in the style of Eminem. And I appeared at work that night and they said, why aren't you in uniform? I'm in my Halloween costume. Well, what are you supposed to be? I'm a white rap star. And this black woman who refused to call herself black, she swore she was Canadian Indian. Now, let me tell you, I'm more Canadian Indian than she is. At least my grandmother was from Canada. But anyway, I digress. Um, she said, I don't see it. And I said, I'm sorry. I said, I, I refuse to pull, I said, I refuse to wear my pants down that low. I said, I have a problem with that. But other than that, 20 minutes later, I'm getting called into the manager's office to be written up 
for racism. The manager on third shift that did absolutely hated my guts because I had a common sense approach to management and was generally well respected, well loved by my employees as well as I could get them to, they followed procedures and I could get them to do whatever they want, whatever I wanted them to do job related because I treated them with respect when they did a good job. I thanked them when I, <clears throat> when, you know. She had. She and I had a discussion one night. She could not understand how I could get some people to do work when she couldn't get them to do the work. And she's like, how do you get them to do their work? And I said, well, I just ask them and they do it. And she goes, I don't understand. How do you get them to do their work? And I'm like, I just ask them to do their job and they do it. You know, it's. I ask them to go do something, they do it for me. And it's very simple because it was a very laid back atmosphere at the casino where... If they did their work, if they bust their butt for me, I rewarded them. You know, I'd let them have an extra cigarette break or I'd let them have a 10 minute break or a 15 minute break during the night if there was nothing to do and they had been working for, working really hard for me. And that's just really simple. All you do, you know, I found what works is if people do their job and they be, you know, they do their job right and they do the job well and you recognize them and you thank them when they do an awesome job, when they go above and beyond. When they go really above and beyond, you write them accommodation for their file, you know. It's amazing how much that works. But anyway, that's just all digression there. So, she goes, so anyway, this manager who has a problem with me is like, well, we had complaints that you were making racist remarks when you signed in tonight. And I said, excuse me? I said, can you be more specific? Well, it had to do with pulling up your, the, the comment about pulling up your pants. I said, Oh, okay. I said, well, I said, now, I said, I know exactly who filed the complaint. I know exactly why she did it. I said, and you tell her that if she continues to harass me like this in the workplace, I will come after her for reverse racism, and then I will get her for sexual harassment because she is dis because, you know what? I'm gay. I'm part of a protected class. You can't treat me like that just because I'm white. And I said, and you might want to go back to her and tell her that I've dated two black guys and a Filipino guy, so how could I possibly be racist? And then I said, and if we want to continue having this discussion any further, I would suggest we not until I get a lawyer. And so it was dropped. And it was memorable because I went back to my booth where I was the only Caucasian. I had Haitians. I had black people. I had... Um, I had one Hispanic guy, and I also had two Lithuanians. And I said, would you all believe I just got written up for being racist? And everyone's jaw hit the floor. They're like, nuh uh, not you, Andy. You are the least racist person here. I said, thank you, as long as somebody else is clairvoyant, is clear-headed enough to get that. So that's why it was memorable, because it really insulted me that I would be considered racist when I was brought up to treat everyone the same. Oh, there goes my neighbor. Hi, Steve. All right, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. So number two, what's your favorite and least favorite sound? Okay, well, let's start with my least favorite sound. That buzzer is my least favorite sound ever. Aside from the sound a old TV set makes, the old tube style TVs, when there's nothing on the channel, and you had that high pitched squealing that only like a fraction of the population can hear. Um, probably my most favorite sound, I, God, you guys really stumped me with these questions. These are things I would never have even thought about. Oh, my favorite sound. I don't know. I really couldn't tell you, CCC. I don't know. And number three, the rudest thing I've ever done. Okay. Um, it was at my last job where I kind of got a little mouthy with a customer. And deservedly so. Because she was doing one of those stare down at her pussy while placing her order at the speaker. 
and I'm sorry, sound doesn't travel that way as well as it would if you were looking directly at the speaker, and I'm watching the woman out through the window of the store, and I asked her to repeat herself a little louder. I said, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Could you please speak up a little bit? And she kept speaking the same volume. And then the third time I asked her to speak louder, she mumbled. And then finally I told her, please drive up to the window uh, and I'll take your order at the window. And when I got up to the window, I said, I'm sorry. I was having a really hard time hearing you. I was asking you to speak a little louder, but apparently that was too difficult for you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to challenge you like that. I cam D. Ah, let's see, what happened to toe number 10? Can we call you Andy Nine Toes? Just kidding. Um, well, let's see. 2010, I think? Yeah, 2010 sounds about right. I woke up and sat up in bed and immediately got a horrible cramp in my foot. Um to the point where I was walking on my left heel and my right foot. And I kind of stumbled my way down the stairs. I worked third shift at the time, so it was like eight o'clock. And I was like, Mom, I cannot straighten out my foot. My, to my feet really hurt, I can't walk on them. Can you take me to the ER? And so she took me to the ER. And good old Bacchus Hospital, diagnosed me with what's called Morton's Neuroma. It's basically an inflammation of a nerve in the foot. And so they sent me on my way and it cost me a small fortune because I didn't have medical insurance at the day. And so I go to the doctors and blah 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 and they send me home or whatever. And I'm spending the rest of the night work walking on my heel. The next day my foot seemed fine. I was walking on it. Everything was fine. And the next day, I had problems again. Really, really bad. I had a big red open sore on the top of my pinky toe on my left foot. The manager had recommended his podiatrist to me in Waterford. So I went to the podiatrist and I, and I said, I just need you to take a look at it because, you know, Richie recommended you and blah 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 so he takes a look I take my sock off he looks he starts he irrigates it a little bit rinses it out and he goes in there with a clean pair of tweezers and all of a sudden he just goes tap like this and he almost got my foot in his jaw turns out what I thought was a pussy sore was actually uh, exposed bone in my left toe and he goes, um, I've got some really bad news for you. And I said, what's up? And he goes, <clears throat> you need to get yourself into the hospital tonight. And I said, what? And he goes, you have a bone infection in your foot. And he goes, and at the very least, you're going to have to lose a toe. And I don't know how much farther the damage is, but the sooner we get you in and the sooner we get that diseased bone, that infected bone out of your foot, the better chance we have of saving the rest of your foot and your leg and etc. And so I said, oh God, you know, I was in freaking tears. I'm like, how the fuck am I going to afford this? I'm working like 20 hours a week for $9 for like eight and change an hour. I was making eight forty an hour. I'm like, I can't afford an amputation. My God. You know, I was stressing out, I was crying, and I looked at the doctor, I said, it's not losing a toe that I'm worried about, it's the bills, the money, you know, a toe is a toe, whatever, I've got nine more, you know. So, I called my mother, and I said, uh, first I got out into the parking lot, I called work, and I called my boss, and I said, I was just to see your podiatrist, he told me I need to be in the hospital tonight, I need to have my toe amputated tonight. And he goes, okay, well, you need to get that taken care of and call me back and let me know how it goes. I said, okay. Then I called my mom. I said, I'm on my way home. We need to pack things up for me because I need you to bring me to the doctor or to the hospital. The doctor wants me to have my toe amputated tonight. And when I came back to work, one of the, uh, one of the newspaper carriers said, hey, can I call you Andy Nine Toes? And I said, 
sure, I've been called a lot worse in my life. That's nothing. So that's why I laughed when I, when I came to first put this up because she came up with Andy Nine Toes, and that was exactly my nickname after the amputation, which is hilarious. <clears throat> okay, did anyone in your family experience the hurricane of 1938? Um, yes, I would have to say they did. However, the members of my family that I'm not speaking to. They've either passed away or I disowned due to their own psychoticness. <clears throat> Before the days of cell phones, have you ever used a CB radio? Um, and if so, what was your channel name? I have never used a CB radio, so that doesn't apply. But I've never used a CB. Um, the closest I've come to ever touching a CB was, uh, or the closest I've been to using a CB was uh, <laughs> singing along to C.W. McCall's Convoy. Okay, <laughs> that's as closest as I've ever been to operating a CB. It's not my thing. It's not something I ever got into. But I know a lot of people turn it into a hobby and stuff. So, you know, to each his own. Well, thank you, everybody, for your questions and answers. I hope I've satisfied your curiosity. And, you know, if you got any more, feel free to drop me uh, your questions in the comments below. And I might just do an episode, too, because I'm at 39 subscribers. One more would be the big 4-0. You know, I just realized, 39 subscribers, and I'll be turning 39 this year. That's pretty cool. Anyway... This is DCA, and I'm signing out for now, and I hope to see you all uh, as you do whatever it is you do when you're watching my videos. Feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Tell your friends. Telegraph. Telephone. Thank you all for your support. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for the great questions. And if you want to submit more questions, like I said, please do so below, and I will put them in a second video. All right? Bye-bye.